let's say your son or daughter has been hospitalized for an emotional or a psychiatric reason. What do you do when they're out of the hospital? Well, this is one of those areas, Julie, where often I get the phone call from the parent whose child is in the psychiatric hospital or has been hospitalized because of an emotional breakdown of right. some sort. And many of these are kids who are actually not yet identified. Many of these students are students who have you know, are doing well in school academically or, or is, are able mm -hmm. to keep up academically when they're there. But at a certain age, usually happens around adolescence, but I also have represented many younger children who have psychiatric mm -hmm. disorders. But basically, you know, what happens is it spirals and the kid ends up in a, in a facility, a psychiatric right. facility, and the parent is either at a loss because they don't think the child can go back to school right. or to the school they used to go to, or the hospital is saying, your child cannot go back to school. I would recommend some lesser level of care, like a residential therapeutic school, mm -hmm. and the parent doesn't even know where to begin. Right. And somebody along the lines has said, I think you need to call this person because they've they've dealt with this system right. before. And it's a really tough situation because in a circumstance like that, if the child has not yet even been identified for services, then the first step is going to have to be for the parent to let the school district know that mm -hmm. the child is in the psychiatric hospital. Now, most good psychiatric facilities have a protocol in place for students who are who are are, you know, student age, school age kids who are in their program where they have a form that they actually send to the school district because if it's a lengthy stay, a few weeks, they do provide tutoring many right. of these facilities. Right. So they'll send a form to the school district, which in my view would trigger the school district's obligation to maybe convene an individualized education program team meeting if the child's not yet eligible right. to find out if they're eligible. So if the student doesn't yet have an IEP, the first step is should they? Right. If the student already has an IEP, or even a 504 plan, which right. is a different kind of plan under a, a different statute, then the, the parent should be saying, okay, my child has an IEP or a 504 right. plan. You need to be aware that he or she is at XMYZ Hospital. We need to convene a meeting to discuss programming. And that programming may mean anything from, okay, he's, he or she's going to get out in three weeks. For the first week back, we're going to have them go to the high school they used to attend, but within a supported program within the high school and a check-in person or right. a part day or a slow, some kind of a slow training transition, you might need to modify the IEP. Um, there, it could be looking at different kinds of placements. Well, and the bottom line, too, is if your child has had an emotional or psychiatric um, stay in the hospital, mm -hmm. that their needs may now be changed. Yes. So therefore, the way that their needs are met in school need to change, right. which should trigger that IEP team meeting where you decide does the child need to be evaluated because there's a new area of suspected disability? Right. Or if it's ongoing, what needs to change as a result of these new set of circumstances? And it may that, be new diagnoses. Right. The, the hospital may have issued new diagnoses. Right. The, the situation gets very acute because what I see happen a lot is that insurance companies are kind of pointing in the direction of the school district and saying, this is not a medical issue, this is an educational issue. Right. And the school district's pointing in the direction right. of the insurance company saying, this is an, this is a, an educational issue, not a medical issue, not yeah. an educational, and everyone's doing this. And the parent, all they know is their child is sick, they can't be discharged from this program or, or can't go to back to school, and nobody wants to take responsibility. Right. And so the question in that situation is, does the child's, you know, do, do the diagnoses and do, do the um, the constellation of issues rise to the level that this child should be identified as a student who has an emotional disturbance if the child, which is a, a category under the federal special mm -hmm. ed laws, or if the child's already eligible under a different category, is that the right category? And even so, even if it's the right category, is this program that the child was in previously still the right program? Right. It's a very complicated area. It is. Hopefully one that's a little less complicated yeah. is if your child has been hospitalized for a, a medical reason mm -hmm. or perhaps a physical reason. And so what I mean by that is they've broken their leg right. or they had to have their appendix out, something along those lines. It could be lines. major surgery. It could be anything, right? Right. Yeah. And, and, and so what about that, Jen? So, you know, I mean, I have many clients who are medically fragile who have IEPs. I have many clients who are not in any way medically fragile who also have IEPs and end up in the hospital for, uh, as you mm -hmm. said, an appendicitis or something. Right. But why is it important then to trigger the IEP meeting, which is, again, the next thing you do? You mm -hmm. ask for an individualized education program meeting 
and if your child is not yet identified, again, same thing. We want to see if the child's right. eligible. The reason is that if your child has an IEP and now they've had a, a stay in the hospital, there may be additional accommodations that may, to, right. may need to be made when the child returns to school. So it could be anything from, you know, if a, a kid's in the hospital and has um, an IV antibiotic, as an example, right. and now that IV antibiotic is actually going to go back to school with the right. student and is on, you know, a pole. Mm -hmm. And there may be accommodations. The kid may need a key to the elevator. The kid, you know, I mean, there's lots of things right. that now the plan might have to change. Right. Absolutely. So what you need to know is if your child has been hospitalized, you want to let the school district know. You perhaps want to hold an IEP team meeting so everybody can be on the same page so that their new needs can be accommodated at school.